everyone welcome back to my channel today we are going to be doing a video where I give you my top recommendations for your OBGYN rotation if you don't know it by now my name is Jani I am an OBGYN resident I'm about to start my third year I will be working with medical students just like you on their OBGYN clerkship if you want to stand out and make a great impression on the residents that you will be working with Stay tuned for my top tips for medical students going to their OBGYN rotation. Before we get started, please remember to hit the subscribe button down below. Follow me on social media like Instagram or Twitter to stay up to date with what I am doing on my day to day. So without further ado, let's get started. So my first tip is to be prepared. And basically, this means that you should know the, the very basics of OBGYN, which include obstetrics and gynecology. More likely, you will be spending more time doing some form of obstetrics, where you will be on labor and delivery, seeing pregnant women for their prenatal care, and things like that. So knowing about gravity and parity, the, how we present patients, what TPAL means, so term pregnancies, preterm pregnancies, abortions, and living children. That presentation is very, very important. You should also know the cardinal movements of labor, so the movements that babies undergo while moving through the maternal pelvis to be born. You should also know the signs of placental separation. So a few things happen when the body is getting ready to expel the placenta and these are easy questions that we can ask you while you're on your rotation. In addition to that, you should know a little bit about contraception and what options are there, what we recommend the most and what kinds of contraindications are there for different types of contraceptions for like oral contraceptive pills or progestin based methods. In addition to that, you should also know a little bit about pap smears and why they're important and what we look for and things like that. So those are some of the most basic things you will see in, during your OBGYN rotation and you should really know all about that. Next up is you should know your female anatomy basics. So you should know the base basics of the external genitalia, a little bit about the reproductive organs and their significance in both labor and delivery as well as surgery. So you might be scrubbing into surgical procedures where our, well, where the attendings or the residents will be asking you questions about the female anatomy and you should know these things, at least they're pretty basics, so you should know your reproductive structures, you should know a little bit about the course of the ureter um, in relation to the maternal pelvis or the female pelvis and you should know the external genitalia uh, structures in order to make a good impression on your upper levels. Next up is the fact that OBGYN is a very different specialty than all of your other rotations. So we present things in a different way. We pay special attention to certain things that they don't in other rotations. And our, the way that we do our history and physical exams is also a little bit different. So it's important to be constantly reading and learning about the things that you will be seeing in the clinical practice, in the clinical setting. So. Staying up to date with current practices or recommendations, for example, the most recent recommendations for pap smears, who will get it and who won't and why, those things are little things that can make you stand out from other students when you are in the midst of your OBGYN rotation. Next up is a very important topic and is ask if you don't know. So don't pretend that you know all of the things and you are the most brilliant student there is when you really don't know or don't feel comfortable with certain things. So just always ask us. We are willing to always answer your questions and give you a little bit of background so that you can learn about what it is that we do on our day to day. Also learn about important topics of women's health and things like that. So always, always ask for help. We will never make you do something that you are uncomfortable with. So if you feel comfortable, let's say checking presentation on a patient 
or you feel comfortable doing a speculum exam or things like that, then let us know and we will gladly let you do it. But also, if we ask you to do something and you don't know how to do it, don't pretend that you do because our patients are very sensitive. It's a very intimate interaction that we have. So it is very important to make sure that our patients are comfortable and that we are giving you an opportunity to learn, but also we are respecting the patient's privacy and their, you know, modesty. So if you don't know something, just ask and we will gladly teach you so that the next time you can do it all by yourself. Next up is to be proactive and always ask what is expected of you. Labor and delivery can be a very scary and unpredictable place for our patients and for ourselves that are in the learning process and as such we want you and our patients to be comfortable and we want everyone involved to be in their best behavior. So always ask what is expected of you in each rotation and each clinical setting and the residents will let you know what they are expecting from you. In the, same, in the same manner, we expect you to be prepared, so we expect that you know at least the basics about labor and delivery or the certain patient interaction that you will be presented with. And as such, we want you to have read about it, be able to answer questions about it, and also be able to ask us questions about it. So it is very, very important that you are proactive and also you are prepared. And the final point is to anticipate how you can be useful and this will help you not only be useful and be a participating member of the team but also it would help you maximize your learning opportunities. So if you know that there is a patient that is going to be delivering, be proactive and make sure that when it's time for that patient to begin pushing, you will be there and be available. You will, if you know that your resident is going to need exercise gloves and have them ready so that your resident can be there. Have some jelly in your pocket so that you can help us when we are about to check a patient. Things like that, little things can make a lasting impression on the residents that you will be working with. So it's important to find out how you can be helpful and also how being a helpful member of the team is going to help you maximize your opportunities and your learning experiences. I guarantee that if you do these six things, you will definitely stand out among other students in your rotation and you will leave a really good impression on the residents. And as such, if you do decide to apply for OGYN, you will be able to have a good experience with your residents and maybe get letters of recommendations from other faculty members and also make them want you to be a part of their program. So these six little things may seem a little bit silly, but I guarantee that they will be incredibly helpful in making you honor and rock your rotation. So yeah, these are my top six tips for your OBGYN rotation. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any other recommendations for our medical students and how they can excel in their OBGYN rotation. If you haven't done so already, please hit the red subscribe button down below. Follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, so that you can stay up to date with what I am doing. And also give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. That will really help me out a lot. That is it for this video, you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.